I wanted to share the journey into this concertina book. I did a whole video on how I'm using this book, The Flower Hunter by Lucy Hunter, as my inspiration. I will link that in the video description below, but today's video is about how one page made me cry for an hour <laughs> and how it changed my art. You will see it instantly, and it's about finding the softer side of yourself. I didn't expect that to happen in a sketchbook, but it did, and it, and it has been quite moving. So I felt I would share it and open up a little vulnerability in maybe yourself. So let's get into it. This is a C. White of Brighton concertina book. You can see it comes in a case. I love the case. If you're doing mixed media, you probably won't be able to get it back in the case, but in watercolor, I'm not having any problem and I'm over halfway through on the front side. It is a C white concertina sketchbook in A4 size. You can see the little A4 down here. I've got links in the video description box so you can find it. I'm going to share with you just my pages that I've done so far because I feel it's important for you to understand the journey of who I am and what I've gone through because I didn't expect a concertina book to change the way that I'm feeling about a lot of stuff in my art life and I will get into that as we go. So let me just spread it out a little bit here so I have room for you to see. Because it is such a big book you can see this is my hand, so I've never really worked this large consistently. And when I first got it, I was nervous about all the white pages because there's 35 pages in the front and 35 pages on the back of this concertina book. And you can see they're all connected. So they kind of make a, you can flip the page or you can have them out long, right? And display them that way. So to get over my comfort zone and to get me into this book without thinking too hard, I decided to just paint my current palette and paste it in there. So it's done on watercolor paper and I just pasted it in there. And then I had a coloring book that had beautiful vintage butterflies. I love this and I put a quote down there. We have to keep transforming ourselves to become who we ought to be. That's by Oprah. Now when I picked this quote, I did not know the changes that were coming. <laughs> it is very interesting that that's the quote about transformation that I picked for this book. So I started this on August 5th, 2023. And I want to tell you a little bit about my background. I'm an architectural renderer, that's what I went to school for, and I'm also a graphic artist. And then I started my own business in art, and I've been doing art now consistently for 30 years. Because of my background in architectural rendering, I like very straight lines. You can see this is cut very straight. This is cut straight. My boxes are straight. Everything is straight and linear. And I'm going to share with you the journey that I took on this. If you notice, everything as I start to go forward is on the linear side. By that I mean, look at the straight line. Look at the straight box. I have a box here. The only curve really is this ribbon right here and this one behind. But everything else is pretty straight and stiff and pointed. You'll see even my leaves are very pointy and very stiff. Let's see if I can bring you a little closer. There you go. And you can see even my letters that I chose. They're very straightforward, very boxy. This is my comfort zone. I love to have straight lines because they make me feel very grounded, very familiar. It's what I like. It's what I have been drawn to my entire life. And you'll see as I move forward, still more lines, still a straight line. Look at this twig, very straight. Look at this, it has a box here. I have a little oval here, but everything I want you to look at is very linear. <laughs> You'll see the change and why I'm really excited about this sketchbook. So as I go a little further, you'll see here that even this is straight up and down. Look at the straight line here. Notice what I focused on. You don't see the soft pinks here. 
you see the straight dark lines or dark color up here to make that straight line. You'll see a straight line here. I do have a soft curve there, but are you seeing a consistency so far in my straightness and my comfort zone? Even these branches, look, they come out and they're straight. There's no curve, there's no anything. They're very straight. The berries are curved. Then we go into this. You see what I wanted you to focus on. I have all these beautiful flowers down here that are very curvaceous, but I wanted you to see the straightness of the stalk. The stalk here, all the leaves, you'll see, I have a very long straight one going this way and this way, because that's what I was drawn to. You can see what I made stand out. So imagine if these flowers were green and these were just done in pencil, the different effect it would have. I wanted you to go from here across to here into the next item. And I did that on purpose because that is my comfort zone. You can see here that I've added some round shapes. Now I have to tell you, round for me is a feminine shape. I think of round as circular and nurturing and nesting and think of eggs and that kind of thing. So circles to me are very feminine and they make me a little nervous. So when I did these, I just decided that I didn't want little squares, I wanted some circles. And I think it's due to these flowers that they just seemed a little rounder. So I like that that would carry over to the berries here. So I have like a round shape, some round shapes, and then the berries. Now I want you to see this, this part here. You can tell that the lines are still very straight and very stiff feeling. You can see my branches have sharp angles. There's nothing soft about them. You can even see the berries, the little leaves in here that I've tucked in the berries. Those are very straight. You see them coming down straight? Look at this twig down here. It is angle, angle, angle. No softness. I even have this sitting on a square. Now I do have a soft little portion up here on the pot, but that I really liked. I liked that it was kind of decaying and that's why I have this kind of softer edge here. But as you see, it's still very stiff. My big change came from this page to the next. I knew I wanted to have this hanging vine down here because I really love that in the photo. And what I needed was something to connect this to this. And I started with just drawing something to kind of connect it and I wasn't happy with that. And then I thought about shapes, you know, connecting this and this and having a little bit of airspace would be very beautiful in my opinion. So I started adding little squares and like a giant rectangle, but I just didn't like the feel of it. So I got out my compass and I drew one circle. I drew this circle here. When I did that, I actually took a deep breath. It actually made me like gasp because it was such a huge area. I want you to look at the size of this circle compared to this, <laughs> compared to this. I mean, it's really quite large. And because I did that, I decided to make a bigger circle and add one here. Now I knew I didn't want them colorized, right? I just wanted them to have the mixed media appeal of this. And I got these two done. And then I decided to add this little one up here because I kind of liked the arc that it was going. Did you see what kind of shape that did? Just the arc this way. Do you see how soft that is? When I put these three circles down, as silly as this sounds, I actually cried because it brought out a softer side to me that I wasn't expecting this book to do. Three little circles changed the trajectory of this book. These three circles changed the trajectory in my sketchbook, in my art, and it affected me all year. It's even affecting me this year through the courses that I'm developing. So I want to share with you the vulnerability that that had for me. Because they are now circular, and you can see they create a curve, when I put this down, I want you to see that this no longer is straight angles. I'm getting a little softer. The leaves are still very straight down here, but look up here. I'm actually playing with a little bit of shape. These are rounder. 
Notice they're not hard points. Notice that I'm letting them kind of mush together in a circular shape of color. Unlike this one, that I forced you to look at the dark area. Do you see the difference in how I painted this flower? And you can see, I've even got here tangling tendrils up here where the vine, and then I've got a nice little element here. To me, this felt very soft and unlike me because I am more hard and distinct. And when I realized that just that little piece with these circles added a softness to me, I started wondering like, why did that make me so emotional? And what it told me was, it was a part of weakness. I saw being vulnerable as being weak instead of being the tomboy or tough girl or someone who's independently working. I found it as almost less independence for myself. And when I actually thought about that, I am like, that is so crazy <laughs> that I have conjured this up in my head about circles and feminism and being soft. So I want you to see how this changed. And you'll see throughout this book now, I want you to just remember this page because of all the hard angles everywhere, right? The leaves are hard, the little tendrils coming off are hard, the sticks are hard. And I want you to see the softer side of me emerging here. You'll notice I even picked a curvy letter. letter. It's the first time in the book I did that was put a soft letter. All of these tiny things are showing my evolvement as an artist. And that is why I am loving this concertina so much because I never expected this to happen from a sketchbook. But doing a practice in it consistently has showed me that I have so much more to share, <laughs> so much more to give and talk about than just hard lines and hard things. You can see here, round, 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 all around berries, all around olives. You can see even these, they have the points, but you'll see that I took the time to make them heavier in here where they are a little bigger in shape and I left the points alone. A lot of times I would have made the points of these a lot darker, like I would have dropped some darks in there, but instead I dropped darks in the center here to give it more body. The circles, they were making me still very uncomfortable, so I chose to let them kind of fill in as I went. So I did this one first because it was solid. And then I did this one leaving a little bit of space because I still wanted space for myself in there, I think. And then this one, I left a lot more space because I'm slowly accepting this softer side of Kelly. These olives, I wanted them totally solid, but the berries I left open. And so you can see that this leads you in and then these leaves lead you to the next page. Now, because of all the circles <laughs> on these pages, right? So we got all these circles, all these circles. I needed a breather. <laughs> so the breather to me is adding these rectangles. <laughs> Once I did that, I was like, okay, I'm feeling a little bit normal now because all of these circles are making me feel really kind of nervous and anxious because I'm not finding my comfort zone of a hard line, of a square, of a definite shape. All of these are kind of soft and textured, which I love the textureness, but the softness is what was messing me up. <laughs> or as I went, I want you to notice the change of just the leaves here from the first page. Do you remember my first page had that very straight line? You see how straight that is? Very straight. I want you to see just the gentle curve now that I have. I do kind of have a straight line here, but now I've got one coming downward. I've got them, look, they're curving. Look at my leaves are curved, right? They're no longer straight or pointy or have hardness. They're soft and flowing. Even my little petals, <laughs> they are not sticking to straight up like a stiff item anymore. They have a little bit of curve from the branch to the leaf. 
You could see even my drawn ones just in graphite. Those are softer. I put a bowl on here and the bowl is soft here, curved, but I also put soft round flowers on it as a decoration. Now I do have a little tag hanging here that is a rectangle shape, but you can barely see it. So in the old Kelly ways, I would have made this a dark tag so that you would have really noticed that. But right now I'm embracing the roundness and the softer side. Look, another soft letter. Softness here. Look at the shape of him. Very soft. Look at all these circles. <laughs> so very soft. I have him on a square here, a rectangle here, but look how I broke up the rectangle. You see that I didn't go solid from side to side. I let it kind of scoop down in color. Do you see that? And then I have a rectangle up here. So you can see again, I have kind of a circular shape up here. So it is no longer angular. And doing this piece, I couldn't go any further from this piece for about seven days because it was so much for me to digest with the softness and the curves and just me thinking about it being feminine and girly and soft and cushiony and flowing. You know, that is just a total different words for how I would describe myself. I describe myself as this linear person down here, but even that's changing. So when I went from this page to the next page, I decided that I needed to embrace something that I really know, because again, this is making me feel vulnerable. It's making me feel very open and it's bringing in a lot of different thinking that I haven't thought about in years. So as we go here to here, to go from this page to the next page, again, I did a softer letter and I have two circles here for the palette. You can see how these connect. So this has the soft line connecting here, connecting here. So all of this is creating, look at the shape of it. Do you see it's no longer linear, it's no longer boxy, it is definitely more organic is the way that I'm looking at it. And I'm finding beauty in a new way. And that's really exciting for someone who's been painting for over 30 years. And it is opening me up. I can feel myself almost crack open, if that makes sense. So as we explore more, I went to the yard and I found some leaves. These were the leaves that I picked. Now I just want you to look at those leaves versus something that I would have normally picked like oak leaves or something with sharp points. I want you to notice the flow, how compact they are, and the movement within them. You can see this one moves out. It's very soft. It kind of leans this way. This one leans upward. This one I've got coming down. But notice even this stem part here is not straight. I've got this whole leaf curved. So it's curved like that, right? Instead, I would have done straight. I've got a little straight one back here just for a little bit of comfort. And then let's talk about the flower. <laughs> now I normally don't do flowers because they are very colorful. They are very soft and delicate and they don't feel very tomboyish to me. Leaves feel tomboyish. Flowers seem very feminine. <laughs> and by that, I mean they are soft, they're delicate. They are, they can bruise easy, right? The petals are incredible. Their, their softness and the way they open, you know, think of a flower, they start this way and then they open wider and really produce a beautiful, beautiful view. So when I was doing this flower, I knew that I didn't want it too strong because the way I'm looking at this, this page right here, I am nurturing the softer side of myself. So by wetting this first and dropping color into it, I was like, okay, that feels nice. Let's go a little darker. So I let it dry and then I wet it again and dropped in the darks. Once I did that, I was, that is enough. I didn't want all the details of the flowers because 
I didn't want to see every petal individualized. I wanted it to stay as a whole, right? I wanted it to stay as you can see, it's a giant circle shape. I wanted to embrace that circle. And so that's where this page went to this page. Now again, this page took me about a week before I created again because I left this book open with all my pages wide open on my table so that every time I came to the studio, I would look at it and I would see how far I've progressed. Now I know you're probably thinking, this is so weird. <laughs> but I want you to think if you like circles, why don't you use squares? If you use squares, why aren't you using circles? Is it just because you haven't thought about it or because they make you uncomfortable? This book made me very uncomfortable from the very start because I was overwhelming with how many pages and the continuity that I needed to, to do in this book. So from here, I liked this coloration, but I knew I needed some structure. Again, look, I have no structure here except for the B. So I've got no structure, and then I decided that I needed to put an E there for my writing because it gives me those straight lines. Now I want you to look at this branch especially. Nowhere in this branch, except for this little section, is there straight lines. So they kind of curve everywhere. Everything curves now. I'm not pulling straight off. I'm curving the line. This is a curvaceous shape. Even the little tendril off of the leaf, I've made it kind of wiggle like that instead of doing a straight line. Every one of them has some kind of wiggling motion on them. And even the berries, the berries now have circular leaves, circular berries, <laughs> a circular little pieces over here. Think of them as like little buds on the berries. Everything is very circular and round and it's soft. I want you to look at the colors. Have you seen anything this soft so far? No, you haven't, except for maybe that floral, which I just did. So this evolution in me is also evolving my colors by the way that I want to showcase the, the shape, but I don't want to be too bold about it because I'm still very unsure of it. So imagine if I had done these in like a bright red or something bright yellow, right? It would have gained your attention. But instead, I chose to keep it very soft, very almost neutral, very organic in color. Even the berries, I don't have them in bright red, but they are kind of like this. It's called Pink Haze by Schminky. It's a granulating color, but I love the duskiness of it. And again, it's all muted here. So as I go to the next page, you'll see I decided that I need to be bold. So as I move the colors here, again, I'm feeling the comfort of my little rectangles here. I want you to look at how this page frames this page. You can see that it arcs this way and it's kind of sheltering this apple. When I did the apple, I knew that I wanted it, it there, but I didn't know what to put it on. So I took the, the design from this and just made it look like two books, like they were kind of stacked on one another. But I want you to notice again, there are no hard edges. Even my books, I've softened the edges here so there's an edge here, but I want you to see how I streaked that down so that it's not filled solidly. I could have filled this solidly green or solidly one of these colors to make it really stand out. And you'll see that one is filled pretty solidly, but I want you to see where I've made your attention. Go right here. So I've got it darkest next to the leaves, but the apple is the star of the show. It is the only red color there. It is round. I wanted to express joy, I wanted to be bold, and I felt this inside of me as I'm embracing it and it's gonna be delightful to experience this a little bit more. So as I did this, I wanted to add a little softness here, so I added like a little tassel coming out of a bookmark from the book. The leaves, you can see they're soft or they're pointy. This leaf is pointy. This one is pointy. It's got a nice shape down here. But I want you to notice the stems are very curvaceous. The stem of the apple is curvaceous. This one is curvaceous. Notice that I didn't give this one any power. 
I wanted you to see from here to here and then go from here over to the next page. I don't know if you can see this, but I drew a giant circle here. So it is this big. It's just an outline. Can you see that color starting here? A little bit of color here. When I put that circle there, it was weird. I felt like, okay, I'm accepting this. <laughs> it is a shape that I'm almost used to at this point, which is kind of funny because it's been an emotional roller coaster so far. But when I put that there, I just, I didn't think about it anymore. I was like, okay, it needs a circle or it needs some kind of shape. And I tried a rectangle, it was just too hard. But when I put the softness there of the circle, I was like, yes, that is what I need. And then came these leaves. Have you seen anything this flowy in my book yet? <laughs> As these leaves. Let me pull it down so you can see the top here. I have them intertwining with the circle from here to here. But I have one totally curving that way and I have this one totally almost framing the circle this way. Notice how bold I did them. I wanted you to go from your app from the apple to looking at this to all of these these three things again I had to pick a sharp letter because it's very round to me right so I need that comfort zone of something firm <laughs> but what I also did was I let this be more of a kind of pinkish orange red so this is very yellow red for like an apple, but I wanted to add a little bit softer. So I added the color apricot or else shell pink. I don't remember which one I added, but I let it be very light and florally in color instead of like my dead brown leaves that I love to do. And when I did that too, I felt another shift in myself as, wow, this color is really nice. Why haven't I played with something like this before? You know, why do I always go to something either dark green or the dark brown that I love? Why haven't I explored this? And that made me realize that color is also changing and it's connecting to that softer side of me. So from here, you can see this petal lifted up. I wanted the connection here because look at the beautiful line this has. It goes up, over, and down, and then up and out. So let's do that again. Up, down, up, and over. Now I want you to see, did you see any hard angle lines there? No, you did not. Look at the vase that I even have. It's a soft rounded. It's rounded corners. It's rounded down here. I have a little bit of a square up here, a rectangle. But notice what I did. I put the flower over it to kind of break up that line. And as I started working on this piece, I decided to... For the color palette, I wanted to be softer, more organic in coloring, and I wanted it to feel like dried flowers fresh out of the garden. So I didn't want any dark like browns. I didn't want anything to seem like they were decaying. What I wanted them to look like was that they came in and now they're on their way out. Now, normally what I would have chosen is the seed pod head or the darkness, the dark brown of them actually decaying instead of leaving color in them. So this gave me a little bit to explore. I brought some of the pink down here into the water. I brought a little blue and yellow up here. I like this softer yellow. You know, normally I am a gold person. Let me find those apples. So look at the difference between this and look at the softness here. A big difference. So these pages, these colors right here, have helped me evolve just with my color stories in this book. Because the next pages are going to follow this softness. And I can't wait to see where that leads me into the next path, into whatever is coming change-wise. It is a progression of myself that I see in this book. And I would have never thought a concertina sketchbook could do that. But I let myself just go about it thinking about the story that I was telling. You know, I wanted the pages to kind of merge and blend into one another. That was my main concern for doing this book. But I didn't expect 
a huge shift in my emotions, in my artwork, in my color palette, in my thought process. I didn't expect any of that. So if you're someone who's been doing art a long time, I want you to think about what your concertina sketchbook would look like with the continued story. And would you see an evolution or would you just keep doing the same thing over and over and over? And I think as artists, we need that challenge and we need that growth to see us develop and change and morph and transform into the next version of ourself. I hope by sharing my evolution, it connects to you on a heart and soul level because that is how I feel inside this concertina that my heart has been cracked open and my soul is smiling so delightfully right now. So take the chance, show your vulnerability, embrace it, and just be excited for what's coming next. It's a beautiful journey. If you are inspired by today's content, please like, comment, or subscribe. I would really appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching.